Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the EMP EDC Relative. This is actually the prototype. I'm a little a little late on this guy. I think the pre-orders for this knife are actually landing right about now, which is fine. You know, some people, if you want to know what I think after you get yours, then here you go. Thanks so much to uh, EMP EDC for uh, sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I have no idea if they plan to do additional runs of these or not. I will link their website down below so you guys can take a look if you want to. Um, let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the relative coming in at, that really surprises me. I, I thought this would be at least eight inches, 7.75 inches overall, blade length, blade length, sorry, my nose is a little stuffed up, 3.35 inches cutting edges coming in at about three and a quarter. Still very close to what I'd consider to be full size. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? You can see here, this is about in between, but it's got a bit more presence than the Rat 2, so it feels more like a full-size knife than you might assume. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? We have some similar ergonomic zones, but it is definitely a different knife. How about up against the PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Again, some similar ergonomic zones. If you take a close look to the Para 3, uh, especially the Para 3, right? And then last but not least, the um, Benchmade Bugout and the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, which is very similar in overall prisons. How's the action on this guy? So these are manufactured by Bestec, and Bestec does a good job. It's nice, you know, it's expected. Uh, quality in the action. It's very, I think, uh, really emphasis here goes on the ease of manipulation due to the placement of all of this stuff, right? You get the hole in the right place. It's easier to, it's a lot easier to get your finger in there. <laughs> there's just no, there's just no way around that uh, suggestive dialogue, huh? There's just no way around it. <laughs> the curse of being a knife reviewer. Um, <laughs> it's very, very easy to reverse flick. Um, very, it's incredibly simple to, you know, use the thumb and sort of flick it out this way. Uh, it's also really easy to, um, front flip it, right? The pivot action is good. It's not like, you know, buttered glass, false shut or anything like that, but it's good. It's about what I expect it to be. Um, so yeah, actually very pleasant to manipulate, um, exactly what you'd want. I think the detent is tuned correctly. Nice clicky, uh, you know, closed position action, all of that. Really good. I like it. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spider Coat Para 3. Eh, honestly, it's a little bit. It's a little bit thicker. Not too much. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Where are you? There you are. Uh, we are looking at a knife that's going to take up a little bit more room in the pocket than the Para 3. And not quite as much as the PM2. It is fairly tall in places, right? So just bear that in mind. Let's do weight. How much does it weigh? Is it milled out for weight reduction? I finally replaced the batteries in this flashlight, so it's real bright. Uh, yeah, it is milled out for weight reduction. I don't think there's a whole lot of changes between this and the versions that you're going to be getting. I know that the, uh, the, the, the pre-ordered variants, I don't know if there was actually a full tumbled and satin finished one. I think they were all like different colors and things, but I don't think there's a whole lot of difference as far as what I could tell. Weight on this guy, 4.27 ounces. So we don't have that perfect ounce and inch ratio that some people look for, but I don't really care about that. I just show it in case some people do. Uh, honestly, there's enough weight in the blade that the balance on it's pretty good. It's right where you're gonna have your index finger in the standard grip, right? So it doesn't feel like a heavy knife. I think that's nice. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. After four years, I finally replaced my, you can just barely see it on this guy, this new one. I finally replaced my T8 and T6 bits. <laughs> <laughs> they had taken apart over, I mean, if you can imagine 3,000 uploads and I don't know how many off camera disassemblies, right? Even the Wii bits, right? But they really do last. That's a lot. Anybody has ever questioned the amount of work that these, T specifically the T8 and T6 bit have gone through out of this box? A lot. 
they have unscrewed a lot of pivots and handle screws, right? Uh, so I finally did replace them for a whopping, I think I got a whole set for like $12 or something like that, but I just put them in the old box. Very inexpensive and very recommendable is what I was going to say. We have a T8 pivot, and then fortunately, we have T8 across the board for all of the body hardware and the pocket clip screws, which is excellent. This would be a very easy breakdown, simple sandwich construction. Uh, make sure you have a place to put your hardware, and you should be good to go. Let's measure blade stock thickness, and we'll get into the meat and potatoes here. Uh, let me know if those uh, time stamps. I've been giving um, Google prompts, like audio prompts. That's why I always say meat and potatoes, because I figure the algorithm catches that, right? So people watch my content, they skip to literally meat and potatoes in the time stamps, stamps that are available for some videos. 147 thousandths, um, so a little bit thicker than what some people might be used to, I think it's fine. It's a good looking knife, right? This is no reinvention of the wheel, uh, but it is nice to look at. I really appreciate that we've got some uh, machining in here, some milling, right? Just a diagonal pattern that's kind of within these two heavily chamfered zones here. All of the edges are nicely knocked down. It is comfortable in the standard grip and definitely in the choked up grip. I love how far out this jimping extends. It's not that you're always needing to have your thumb way up here, but in some cases when you do need it, it's nice to not have it slipping and sliding around whether you're wearing gloves or not. This choil is just about perfect. Ergonomically, this is just a wonderful experience. It is extremely comfortable, and it's nice that we can get a uh, design with such awesome ergonomics and not have it sacrifice anything in the way of aesthetics, at least in my opinion. I think this is a really good knife. A lot of times, <coughs> Spider Co., uh, you get a knife with really good ergonomics that looks... <laughs> Let's be honest, right? This, 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 ask a hundred people, and I would say a good 88% would go, that's kind of an ugly knife, right? And that's fine. Even people who love Spyderco knives can admit that they're, you know, kind of ugly. So it's nice to be able to get, you know, Spyderco ergos with, uh, you know, not necessarily the, the Spyderco aesthetic, right? Um, that's, it's kind of like for a while there, fuel efficient cars were always really ugly, right? Like, <laughs> I remember for a long time, I was like, it's really impressive that the Toyota Prius, you know, gets such amazing gas mileage, but my God, like who designed that thing? You know, let's, let's, uh, let's make a roller skate, uh, and then put a bunch of just weird lines all over it and make it super fuel, uh, you know, <laughs> make, make the fuel economy really good. No, make it look cool. Why did, who, who decided that? Anyways, rant over, geez. I tried not to drink caffeine before this review, right? Apparently that, that doesn't do doesn't do any good. But anyways, I like that they put the EMP EDC logo right there on the pivot and nowhere else, right? Uh, I don't. I think that's the same way with the final versions, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, like I said, ergonomically, really good. Pocket clip, this is the same pocket clip that they've been using to my knowledge, and it works nice and flat, right? Not sharp, or not, I mean, you know, not aggressively sharp. It's just really good. All of the right lines, right? Nothing crazy. Looks good. Easy to manipulate. The blade looks awesome. I like this clip point where we've got the fuller, which is the same area that the, you know, the opening hole is in. The fuller just runs out uh, out to the edge, right, and kind of meets up with this sort of, you know, clip area of the clip point. <laughs> I don't know what we got, the, the clip area. <laughs> Professional knife reviewer at work here. Um, and then we have a compound ground blade hollow on the primary and then flat out of the tip, which is nice. This is actually a super duper utilitarian blade shape. I like this a lot. This is, it's actually not a uh, subtle, uh, uh, it's a very subtle change in angle, meaning as you sharpen it, you don't, there's not like a, like a tip, right? Like a tanto tip that you have to baby as you sharpen it, right? Otherwise you round it out, which ends up happening anyway. I think it's kind of nice that it's already rounded, which means it's like, just, just sharpen it. <laughs> it's fine. Very, very thin right here and thick enough out here that it gives me a little bit more um, confidence. On the website, it shows that you, people had a choice between MagnaCut, LMAX, and CPM20CV. Honestly, take your pick. There's pros and cons to everything, right? If you're new, uh, it's easy for marketing to get a hold of you, right? It's easy to fall into a, a bunch of different, um, you know, thought pools. Uh, one of the most common ones is that CPM 20 CV is a God steal and it is better than everything and nothing can compete with it, which is completely and totally wrong. 
The newest thought pool is that Magna Cut is the same as that. And it, no, it's that's incorrect. All steel compositions are multi-directional teeter-totters, which means sometimes you'll have more in one area and, you know, that means that you'll have less in a different area. It depends on what you like. Edge retention is not the end-all be-all. Oftentimes with edge retention, in all cases with edge retention, there is at least one major trade-off if you're going to put all of the eggs in that basket, right? So think about what you need for a knife. Um, Personally, um, I think Magna Cut's okay as far as, you know, balance and companies that have been able to get the heat treat correct uh, and get the major benefits from the composition. Honestly, I kind of like LMAX out of the three because it's the closest to S35EN, S45EN, which they, they have incredible balances of corrosion resistance, edge retention, toughness, right, ease of sharpening, all that. Um, I kind of like LMAX the best, but it's up to you. I mean, obviously, the people who pre-ordered them, they have already made those decisions. So there you go. They're all going to work great. They are all super steals, right? They all belong in the same price tier. So you can't really choose wrong. They're also all stainless, right? Um, anyways, I don't want to get hung up on steel. We have a lanyard hole thing. Uh, it's there. Uh, there you go. Lanyard people have it. We did not mill out a spot for the clip on the left-hand side, which is a real bummer. I think lefties probably would have enjoyed this. It is incredibly easy as a right-handed person to manipulate this knife with my left hand, even though I can't get that. There we go. But yeah, I feel like lefties would really have enjoyed this. So we need to get all companies, all tiny, you know, designers and manufacturers and OEI, everybody. We need to get better about... <laughs> Catering to lefties, right? But it makes the, that we have to look at the thing. I don't think enough people really care about that. I think the number of people who care, right, to the point where it would affect sales, I think it is so much less than people realize, right? A lot of the people complaining about it are not even actual customers of the product. They're just people yelling, right? Um, so consider that. I'll tell you this. I'm not going to design a knife and put it on the market. I know people ask me to, but if I did... Absolutely, 100% it would cater to lefties. I would go out of my way to make sure that it was as ambidextrous as possible. It seems like a no-brainer to me, but okay. Um, but yeah, the clip looks good. I like that the clip follows the design, right? On the, um, the variants that were released, you had like a blacked out one. You had a black and bronze one. I think there was like a, probably another one in there. You even had options for like mocha tie and zir zirconium clips and all of that. So yeah. Uh, you know, the pocket... Just fine. It does run over the texturing. So over time, it might fray up your pants, but it's not. Th this texturing isn't like massively aggressive or anything like that. In and out of the pocket is very, very easy. We do have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. You have an internal stop pin right here, which means it's running on channels inside uh, on the inside of the uh, titanium uh, scales there. That's great. I like that setup. Very, very solid. Very, very smooth. No lock stick. I'll show you guys lock up right there. Nice, probably 15, 20%. That'll increase and solidify over time. But as it sits, no blade play up, down, left or right. Be uh, left or right. Best Tech is very good about that. No pivot lash, right? Very smooth and consistent in here. Does run on bearings. Nice. That's a medium. That's the right for this type of deployment. You don't want it too heavy when you have this type of deployment. You can see here I'm getting plenty of force off of this. That's what we want, right? So medium. Uh, detent, which is fine. And this prototype does have perfect centering. So that's really, really nice. I would imagine the other ones will be just fine. What do I think? Well, I really like the design. I really like the whole knife. There's only one thing about this knife that I don't like. I was absolutely flabbergasted to see the price. Wow. Um, coming from somebody who buys ridiculously expensive knives, and I've got my own sense of value right obviously i mean these uh this they sold out the pre-order sold out so you know you could make a you could make a totally fair and potent argument that it was priced correctly right now this is a designer that's doing small batch production runs and utilizing best deck so there's a little bit you got to add a little bit in there for that a little bit more we can't just like run it up against anything else in the market right people are so prone to just be like oh, I could get titanium and M390 from this company for well let's you you're you're literally just taking one element that's the only element you know to compare so you you feel like that that's the only thing that's important no there's so many other elements you have to consider 
right? This guy's not just here like, I'm just here to like, you know, take all of my time and not generate any income for myself and just, you know, create a charitable, basically knife giveaway for people. No, there's got to be markup for him enough to make the entire process, the time it takes to run the pre-order, get the batch done, get everything sent out. There has to be, considering how much time he'll put into it, there has to be room for him to make decent Mark, uh, a decent, decent profit, right? So you, you have to put that in there. Best Deck does a really, really good job uh, milling titanium. Yes, they're doing stuff out of China, but is there a difference between, you know, somebody like Best Deck and somebody like Frost Cutlery? Absolutely. Best Deck is one of the better Chinese uh, OEMs out there, right? They are using premium materials. But it's Chinese 20 CV, Chinese Magna Cut. No, it isn't. It's American 20 CV, American Magna Cut. Bowler LMAX. There is no Chinese 20 CV. There is no Chinese Magna Cut. They're getting it from freaking Crucible. Right? That's where it's coming from. Right? It's, it, is, it is expensive. The whole process of putting it together is much less expensive than doing it here in the United States. That being said, the fact that you can still get a Rick Hinderer XM18 for $425, but that's not full titanium. It might as well be. It's freaking close. You got a tie liner on one side, tie on the other side, and the overall machining quality, right, is just off the charts. The fact that you can still get get that and a bunch of other really, really great American make knives, some of them are full tie. Spartan Harzi, right? That thing's 425, 450. I want to say the Sebenzas, they're what are they? 450, right? Maybe they've gone up a little bit. I don't know. This thing is just way too close to an American knife, right? And a lot of people think that it's just barely any difference is not what it costs to you know manufacture something like this in China while it is very good and very impressive it's substantially less than what it costs to make something like this in the United States it's so much less I think the price was a bit high <laughs> I mean you know a lot of time like like a lot of like Vero stuff which is made by best tech right I always comment if you didn't know right if you don't watch my reviews all the way through I love Vero stuff but I feel like the prices on that stuff are a bit, yeah, right? Can give this a little. I can give this a little bit of a break. I don't think I would have been crying my pants at three twenty five. I'd have been like, eh, right? But I think that the price on this was really high. I'm not really sure what it is that, what makes this that much more special than because there are definitely other designers out there that are running through Best Deck making essentially the same thing with the same materials, not exactly the same design, but very very similar stuff. And they're charging way less money for it, right? So, it's cool. I think the design is great. I think the people who bought it will be very happy with it. Obviously, if you if you already justified that price tag, let me tell you, the quality's there. I think you're going to be happy with your knife. But holy crap, there is a lot of competition. I mean, at 380 bucks, unless I'm missing something. If I'm missing something, let me know, Right? Uh, maybe, maybe the people who got in on the pre-order, maybe they got a little bit of a discount, in which case, great, right? But I, I just, I don't know. I think $380 is, uh, I think that's way too much for this knife. Um, but uh, like I said, everything's sold out. So it sounds like, you know, they maybe they priced it appropriately uh, considering their market, you know? So that is uh, that is a factor. Um, but uh, this, this is what I think. So I appreciate EMP EDC for sending this in to me uh, to take a look at. I think that's going to be pretty much it today. Like I said, if you want to check out the website, I'll link it down below. That's it for me. Please, whoops, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.